hi guys, this is amazing. An aircraft, uh, I said, called a Gulfstream G650ER jet. It's a business jet, and it will attempt to break a world speed record of circumnavigation of the Earth via the two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. It's taking off from the Kennedy Space Center, and then it'll be going via the North Pole, which is there. Then it will fly down to Kakistan and land at the airport there. And it's coming up shortly. Give me a sec. I'm talking to the video, so I have to wait for it to go forward. There it is. That's the airport it's going to first land at to refuel. The refueling will take about 45 minutes. Obviously, they're not putting compressed gas in there. They're putting fuel in there. <laughs> uh, and it's going to fly south to Louis Louis uh, Louis Moretus, which is down. Uh, I think it's about thirty-two degrees south. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But it's there. Then it will after refueling. It has to refuel, obviously. Uh, it was saying there's, there's five pilots as well, so they don't, or it's not one pilot. Then the aircraft will travel over to the South Pole and make a turn to travel north northwest um, before landing at the third stop for refueling. And commentary probably. On the live video, with the links in the in the uh, the video. This is the third stop where they're going to refuel again. Another forty five minutes to refuel, and they're not far from reaching around the world, you know, which is like uh, just under twenty five thousand miles. It's not a perfect circle around the Earth because obviously there's not land to learn the aircraft out so they have to plan it very wisely and they go back to the Kennedy Space Center it's amazing and this is the truth about your spinning ball earth there is a south pole there's a north pole and everything you've been told is 100% correct if you believe in the flat earth then you are very retarded let me just think. I can't remember what I've recorded, so I'm just, I'm just doing audio over top of it. Um, I'm measuring. Oh, I'm measuring. I'm measuring the distance between each leg because I wanted to check the fuel of the aircraft, obviously, because that's a lot of compressed air you need to run that aircraft. So you can see the first, the first leg. Obviously, they're not landing at North Pole, but that's the distance. I've got it in kilometers. Sorry about that. I changed it to nautical miles later. You can physically see from the um, the landing points that they are travelling the distance they say, because I'm measuring it now. You can see it live. Uh, it's in kilometres, sadly. I I like to use nautical miles, but I didn't notice it was on kilometres. I will change it in a second. And this is the airport. Um, that's Pakistan. Or Kazakhstan, how you say it, and then they go. To, that's the first landing point. So they took off from the Kennedy Space Center. They've gone there, and this is the second landing um, uh, area where they refuel. That should take forty-five minutes to refuel. Uh, I'm not sure why it takes forty-five minutes to put a lot of compressed air in the engines, um, but that's the flat surface for you. Now, over the South Pole, unfortunately, it's no sunlight there. So you would not physically see that. But you might see the instruments, and hopefully, hopefully, they will show you that. Um, the head-up display, you could physically see the ground properly. Because of the, I've changed the nautical miles now. Okay. And now let's go to a landing point three. The reason I'm doing this video is because it's very important. Um, 
people believe they live on a flat earth and they don't. They live on a spinning ball earth. This is landing point three, uh, which is Chile. I did have the airfield names written down, but I don't have them in front of me, so I can't tell you which one it is. But um, the information will be on their website. And hopefully, um, when you watch this live in the next... Um, I'm not going to say 24 hours because it's less than it's more than 24 hours, but it will be live very very soon. Obviously, I've got to upload this video, so it might take an hour. Um, so I'm guessing the next 30 hours, you'll be able to watch this live as they do it, and all the links are in the description. I'm not monetized. I don't make any money from doing this. I've done it. Simply to show you it on a spinning ball earth uh, because the map at the front of the video is not very clear, and you have silly people like Dow from Beyond the Imaginary Curve believing it's going round in a circle. Uh, how stupid is he? Am I going to pull him or push him? Push, push, pull. Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. That's an off pole. I can't remember what I'm doing now. Um, I'm just showing the route, sorry. This is the route around the globe Earth that we live on. I'm just... As you can see, they, they change direction considerably at the South Pole. If it didn't change direction, they would end up over the sea and they'd run out of fuel. So we have to change direction to go to that airfield there in Chile to refuel. Because aircraft do not run on compressed air. So... I'm going to show you now, um, let me think, I'll show you the airfields and the length of the runways, uh, we'll measure them. I think this is where I started doing it. No, I'll start doing it in a minute. There's the Earth in space and it doesn't have a dome. If you notice it doesn't have a dome. That's the North Pole. Oh, I'm just showing you the routes now, sorry, so, so you can see it physically. Because it is, it's quite hard to describe. You know, if you put it on a flat map, it doesn't look very good. But if you put it on a physical globe, like I've done, you can see how it works. And it makes much more sense. Now, I appreciate they're not going in a direct line, but it doesn't matter because they've gone to the North Pole and the South Pole, so the distance is correct. That was the uh, was that the first yeah the first landing point. Pakistan. No, that's sorry, that's the second one. Yeah, that's the second landing point. To refuel. Then they go to the South Pole, and they have to do a big turn. And hopefully, it's going to be dark there, so we're not going to see nothing on the ground. But hopefully, we will see. The, the direction of the aircraft change because obviously it's going south and then it has to go um well it has to go north from south it can't go in the other direction but after a, like a mile or so it, it obviously will be north northwest that's the third landing refuel point so they're going to be 45 minutes on the ground there refueling um they might have a cup of coffee too i don't know but this is just amazing um, um, people that sit on their computers and think that the earth is flat are retarded. I'm going to measure the runways now to confirm that the aircraft can physically land on these runways and looking at the distance, yes it can. Uh, the aircraft we're talking about is the Gulfstream G650 ER jet business um, jet. And the longest let me just turn my paper. The longest, the longest leg of the flight uh, is probably the third leg, which is four thousand eight hundred and ten statship miles, plus two thousand five hundred and sixty-one statship miles, which means it's a total of seven thousand three hundred and seventy-one statship miles. Now I know I've used kilometers and nautical miles in my calculator. 
but I didn't realise it was on kilometres to start with. And nautical masks I like to use because they coincide with time. Um, but I, I also calculate in stash at miles. So, you know, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. You can use an online calculator to, com um, to convert them um, and see for yourself. I just wanted to share this because it was fascinating to me personally. Because um, when I saw it on that, that flat map, it, it just didn't look right. And I thought, well, that's a load of rubbish. So this is um, zooming in on the runway before I measure it. Because obviously, I'm a pilot myself, so I know where you land on the runway. You don't always land on the numbers. You normally land on the second, the second um, double line, which is the touchdown point. But they can land anywhere they want. Doesn't matter. I just find it amazing that people believe in the flat Earth, and someone like Dow from Beyond the Imaginary Curve doesn't believe there's anything such thing as pull. He believes only in push because he doesn't want to believe in gravity. And that is a sad, sad state of affairs to be in. There is a such thing as pull, Dow. Dow, get to grips, mate. There is a pull. 